Well, good morning, Radiant Church. Are you glad to be here today? Man, I am so glad that you are at church today. And if I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is Aaron Burke, and I'm the lead pastor here at Radiant. And we are one church with three locations, and we want to greet those who are joining us right now at St. Petersburg, ladies and gentlemen. We love you guys. And our downtown location at Blake High School, man, God's doing amazing stuff there. And all those that are joining us on Facebook Live. And, and I just, I know there's a group here today that are here for the very first time, whether it's here in this service or one of our locations. And we are just so glad that you're with us. You could have done anything else with your Sunday. And I know your location pastor already told you, but we're honored that you're here. We think it's a big deal. We want to celebrate you. So one more time, Radiant, make our guests feel loved. One more time today. Big deal. Well... Um, if, I, if you don't know who I am because you've been coming the last few weeks, I haven't been here. I've been traveling around doing some ministry and just want to give you a little update. I spent three days in Dallas, Texas, helping some church planners in the great country of Texas, and that's an interesting place. And then from there, went to Los Angeles, was able to actually preach at the famous like uh, Los Angeles Dream Center. It's a huge church there. They're ministering to about 700, on their property, they have about 700 people living on the property from the homeless to the, the people that are just gone through bad areas of life to veterans to sex trafficking victims. They've got them in all these houses. It's amazing what God's doing there in Los Angeles. And we went to just learn and to grow and, and we brought them a check for $10,000 from your generosity. So give yourselves a hand for that. Just able to bless those people there. And, and then from there, I was able to go to, to uh, Europe. My sister is stationed in Italy in the Air Force here. And so I know we got a bunch of Air Force here. And so we uh, got to hang out with her for a few days on my way to India. And we have a Bible college in India that you guys helped start a few years back. And I go a couple times a year to be able to teach. And it was such a joy to be part of it. And, and all of that's wonderful, but I'm glad to be home. And I just got home. So we'll see how this goes this morning. So if it's good, it, it was all me. If it was bad, it's the jet lag. So just let you know that's how it works. So now, I, hey, before I get into the message, I got a big announcement. I've been waiting to say it to you guys. I can't wait to, uh, to be part of this with you. And it's for next month. It's for Easter, which is our big Easter. Uh, we do Easter big every year at Radiant Church. It's like a big deal for us. But uh, we are doing it bigger than ever before. So I want to let you know about a couple things. You're going to hear a lot about it. So let me just hear, let you know. First of all, because of your generosity through our legacy giving in, in December, we are doing big um, outreaches that, on Palm Sunday weekend. So that's the uh, Saturday here in South Tampa. We're doing our egg hunt thing, um, actually on the military base. This is going to be really awesome. We'll minister to our families here at McDill. And then downtown in St. Pete, we'll be doing theirs right after service on that Sunday, Palm Sunday. So those are paid for through our legacy giving. And we're just so honored to be part of that and be able to reach people in our communities. We're going to be inviting them all all to Easter at Radiant. And let me tell you, we're going to do a little bit different. So St. Pete, it's your very first Easter with us. So I want you to know we're going big. We're going crazy on this one. And we're going to do something awesome. So here's the big announcement for a couple different ways. First of all, for St. Pete only. Now, Tampa people, don't show up. Like, we're going to check IDs on the way in. <laughs> we're not going to do that. But you get the idea. Um, is we are doing a, uh, a Good Friday uh, communion service just in St. Pete at Canterbury. So we're going to come together. We're going to pack it out. It'll be an outreach to your community. Bring your friends and family there. And then for their very first um, Easter, because that location is just doing so amazing, we're going to have three services Easter Sunday just for you guys in St. Pete. It's going to be an amazing experience, and we're super pumped about that. For South Tampa, we are going to do our Saturday night service. We, we do a Saturday night every Easter, and we normally pack it out. So we're going to do one service for that, and it's going to totally pack out. And then Easter Sunday morning, um, I made a decision on December the 24th last year that I will never do a major event East celebration, uh, holiday weekend ever again at Radiant Church in the Britain Plaza, ever again. So if you were here, we turned away over 500 people in those two services. People were waiting. They were watching on random videos. And I, I just said, I don't, I don't care what it costs. I do care what it costs, but I, I, we will pay it if we are, we are doing our Easter somewhere else. And I'm so excited to announce it to you. Check this out.
But that's exciting, I'm pumped about it. And so here's what we're gonna do. We have Saturday night here at the Britton Plaza. Sunday for downtown and South Tampa, we're gonna be at the Convention Center. St. Pete, you will have three services there at Canterbury. And we're gonna pack every single one of them out. That means we have 2,900 seats just for adults, not including kids. And we have all full kids programs going to there. So you need to bring everybody you know to the Convention Center. We're paying for all the parking. We're making it the best experience ever. It's gonna be the most legit Easter of all time. I can't wait about it. It's gonna be awesome. All right. Take out those worship guides. Inside of there are some sermon notes as we continue this series that Dr. Doug started last week called Strap. And uh, I learned uh, that you can be throat punched, I guess is the phrase that was used. <laughs> Never heard that before, but that was an interesting phrase to learn in church. So uh, we had a great ser- uh, service there. And, and this week, I wanna continue it. The idea of this series is to really help you get free financially. Uh, to walk in the freedom and the plan that God has for you. And it came to me actually in December, this whole idea, where we were doing our legacy offering, where we basically put a Sunday on the calendar to say, listen, we have these five major lanes, uh, five major kind of projects that we're gonna be doing in 2019. Uh, Things like um, Easter, things like next Saturday, where we have a massive serve event, um, packing 80,000 meals for kids in need in Haiti, paid for all by this this offering that we took up in December. And so on that one Sunday, we raised $509,000 for missions. Come on, that's a big deal. Like, that's a huge deal. So... And while that's unbelievable, actually, um, I had so many people come up to me and say, Aaron, I wish I could be part of this. And I was like, well, why don't you? And they're like, I'm just, and they kept using that phrase. It came to me. I'm just strapped. I'm just strapped. I'm in debt. I've got loans. I've got bills that are piled up. And I thought, man, that's just not what God wants people to live in. That's not the plan that God has for their life. I wrote it down in my notes this way, that simply the reason that most Christians aren't generous and, and most Christians aren't, by the way. The 2.5% of our income goes to or towards charitable causes, and I think that's a shame. We should be doing more to help the poor and help the widows and help bring the gospel around the world. And the reason is, it's because I believe because they're strapped, not because they're stingy. Can I get a good amen? amen. So I don't, I don't think you're, you're stingy. I think you want to give. I think you want to tithe. I think you want to advance the gospel. I think you want to help eradic- eradicate sex trafficking. I think you want to do something big with your life. But the problem with it is, is so many of us are not in a place financially where we can help other people. The stats are alarming. One third of all Americans pay the minimum on their credit card every month. That minimum, listen to this, is that the average U.S. household carries $16,000 in credit card debt. Say, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said when I read that statement right there. $16,000. Here's another one. The number of people over 60 with student loan debt quadrupled over the last decade. Why are you going to school? Um, that's, I, I was joking. Um, yeah, never mind. 50% of Americans have less than one month of their income saved for a rainy day. 42% of Americans aren't saving for retirement. Like eventually one day you're not gonna be able to work and there's nothing saved up for you. And the average car loan has hit an all-time high in America of 30 thousand dollars. By the way, that is five hundred dollars a month as your payment on an asset that is depreciating. That's not a good investment right there, church. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this for a little bit today. And then Americans have uh, as a whole a 1.2 trillion with a T dollars in student loans. Houston, we have a problem when it comes to our finances. And what the problem with it is, is I don't think that's what God wants for your life. Uh, let me just say that again. I don't think that's what God wants for your life. I think when I look at this scripture, I think that God wants his people blessed. I think he wants his people generous. I think he wants his people enjoying life and not strapped financially and up at night tossing and turning because of their bills. And if that's the case, then there's something wrong. And I think it's on our end, not on God's end. Can I get a good amen today? The scriptures actually say it like this. When it comes to the plan of God, God says, I know the plans I have for you. And these plans are to what? Prosper. I almost called this series Plans for Prospering because I just knew it'd be a little too controversial. So I didn't say it that way. But but I think God wants you blessed. I think he wants you to, to do more and to give more and to, and to enjoy life more. But some of you guys are simply so strapped. So here's where I've done you a disservice, all right? I've told you, 
And over the years, so this is my fault, and I'm gonna fix it during this series, I've told you that here's how you get the blessed life that God has for you. You simply give. You give. And when you give to God, and when you honor God and put him first, he's gonna bless the rest out of and your life. And, and I believe that is partially true. That when we give to God, it does, it opens up the windows of heaven over our life and it blesses us. But what we've done is we've given to God and then we've had the rest of it in our life and we are m- misspending it like crazy. I have this little thing here. It's like we, we, we come up and we are so excited. We're like, all right, let's, let's buy that thing there. Oh, there's this Starbucks there. Oh, that looks good. Oh, let's do this one here. Oh, look at that. My neighbor's got a new car. I need a new car too. So I'm going to do that one right there. And, and we're just having a good time with this. And then, oh man, my outfits, they're a year old. I need to get a new one. And so what do we do? We just, we're just raining money down everywhere. And, and by the way, if you're watching online or another location, it's not real money here. We're good <laughs> stewards of God's money here, Radiant. And, and, and you wonder why God's not blessing you because you're not taking care of what he's giving you. So here's what I believe with all my heart, and it's, Dr. Doug touched on it last week, that it's not just giving, but write it down in your notes, that a prosperous life is one that combines extravagant generosity with proper stewardship. So it's, 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 not, it's not one or the other, it's both of them. It's the two pedals on the same bike. And so I know what you're thinking. Some of y'all are like, I came to church for the first time in a long time, and that pastor is gonna be talking about money. Can you stay out of my money? That's not, yeah, I, I, this is one of those churches that just wants your money. This is not one of those messages which wants you to know our church is doing great financially. We are more blessed than we've ever been. We live on less than we, uh, than we, uh, than we have coming in, so we're able to give more than we ever able to give before. I want you to know we're in a good spot. This is not a, a giving message. I'm trying to help you experience God's blessing on your finances. And it's not just my idea. Let me just say it like this. I think it's God's idea all throughout these scriptures that he wants a say in how you do your finances. Actually, the scriptures, there's over 2,300 of them that talk about how you deal with your money. That's a lot of scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, that deal with one topic. That's five times more than talk about prayer and five times more than talk about faith. And you don't have any problem with me talking about either of those things. So we're going to talk for a little bit about how do we handle our money God's way. I, I don't know if you ever watch those Jimmy Kimmel videos where they, they take the, the Halloween candy from the kid and why they're just, the kid starts going crazy and starts falling on the floor. That's how some of you are gonna be over the next 15 minutes because I'm gonna be talking about a subject that is just such a big deal for your life and it's how we're spending our money and we're gonna look at it, how we do it God's way. Are you with me? Can you give me a big amen today, church? All right, look at this. This is what the scriptures say. And one of the most famous passages in all the Bible, it's Jesus' big sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount. And on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes a portion of it and he talks about how we deal with our money. And look what he says. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin, you can tell he's from the South right there, is vermin. <laughs> There's just vermin. You don't, you, don't, you don't have those anywhere else. And they destroy and where the thieves break in and steal. It says, but... Store up for yourself treasures in heaven. In other words, there's a, there's a different way to do your money. Where, where moths and vermin do not destroy and, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then he says this statement that's super huge and I want you to get it because it's crucial to understanding how we deal with money. He says, for where your treasure is, that, that's where your heart is gonna be also. So, so where you spend your money and, and what you're doing with that other 90% that's been given to you, that actually determines what you're where your heart is. So I tell newly kind of couples that get together, like, oh, I like him so much. I'm like, well, tell me about him. They're like, oh, he's so amazing. I'm like, do you really know him? Oh, yeah, I see his stuff online. And we went on one date. And I said, listen, here's how you really get to know him. Ready? Ask for his bank statement. <laughs> Ask for his American Express expenses at the end of that a month, at the end of the month. And you go, well, that's a little too intense. Let me tell you, you'll find out who he is by seeing where he spends his money. You can write it down in your notes this way, because you will truly know someone, not by what they say, but by what they spend. So you get to know someone by what they spend. You, you look at it and you go, wait, you bought this much money worth of uh, video games? You invested this much? You didn't show me that on social media. You didn't even mention that in the first date. You're, you're kind of a loser based off of... <laughs> Based off of just going off the bank statement. 
You know? That, that much makeup was purchased? <laughs> I, you're telling me that's not real? You know? Like, <laughs> we know who you are. <laughs> How would you spend? Y'all want another? No, no, no. I'm not doing it anymore. Here, here, here's why Jesus said that. Because money is truly the ultimate indicator of the devotion of a person's heart. So if you want to know where their heart is at, see where they're spending money. See what they're doing. And, and really, a lot of us have got this so wrong. We spend money on crazy, crazy things. So we got to evaluate our heart. I actually challenged you. And the, the title of this message, I put it on the top of your notes right there, just join the resistance. Because the, the world is going to pull at you to spend your money on things and get your devotion off of God and onto temporary things. And there's just this, this draw. And let me just say it. They're spending billions of dollars to try to get your attention off of God and off of eternity and onto temporary things that can never satisfy your life. It, it's just this draw in our life. And so I want you to join the resistance to get it off of those things and onto God. And so the verse goes on to say it like this. Jesus says, listen, no one can serve two masters, for either he'll hate one and he'll love the other one, or look at this, you're gonna be devoted to one and you'll despise the other, and then look what he says. This is so huge, okay? Now, if you don't read the Bible often, just take this at face value right here. Jesus ends this statement by saying, you cannot serve both God and, and now if you didn't see that statement right there, you would think the, the devil, because don't, that's, how, that's what we teach people. There's God on one side, and then there's the devil on the other side. And so you're coming in here today, and you're going, Aaron, it's all good, because I have not worshipped Satan recently. <laughs> really excited. Like, life is on the right path. And you're like, listen, that's not the win of it all. Like, there, people don't just go in and they see the little idol with the, the horns and the pitchfork and go, oh, we give you everything. That's not what it is. Jesus knew your temptation would not be worshiping Satan, he says, listen, you can't serve both God and money. That's Jesus saying it right there. Because he knew the draw would not be Satan. The draw would be materialism, things of this world. So let me help you with this and give you two challenges. And I'm going to go super practical with this to help you experience God's favor and blessing on your finances. And you got to do this. To, to join the resistance, the first thing you got to resist is you got to resist the temptation to, to serve money, to serve money. You see what Jesus said? He said, no man can serve two masters. And I think a lot of us in here are serving um, money with our lives. You go, well, Aaron, I'm not serving money. I, I serve God or I'm serving my own desires, but I'm not serving money. I think you are serving money. Let me show you how a lot of us are serving money. Ready? It's that we serve money when we let it control our life. So we let it control our life. Now, this is a big deal for me because I don't like to be out of control. I like to be in control. Come on, any control freaks in the house today? Like, you're with me? Yeah. Anybody married to one? Come on. Right? No, no, don't, don't, don't answer that. Yeah, 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 don't answer that. It's not going to be good for your marriage. All right? So I've got control issues. My wife has made it very clear I have an issue. And one of those is that I don't like it when she drives. Amen. I just don't think it's, it's not her spiritual gift. <laughs> it's really not. I love you, baby, but it's not. And, and one of it is on road trips, um, I, it drives me nuts when, whenever she'll drive because she goes five under the speed limit. Anybody know people like this? Yeah, I, I don't think they could even be saved, and they are, but they, five under the speed limit. I'm like, Katie, we have a Radiant Church sticker on our car. Like, they're never gonna come to our church if we think we're those people, you know? They go, and she's like, she's like no, 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 Aaron, I, I'm, I'm staying under the speed limit. I'm like, that's not what the speed limit is for. You know, in her mind, the speed limit is the ceiling, no. How many know this, this, this speed limit is the floor of driving? Come on, I mean, it's the start of this thing. Now, there's people that go, no, like, don't take my advice, all right? I don't like to not be in control. And I think a lot of you guys are living your life financially, and you might think you're in control, but you're not. And it's because we have this thing called, and it's a four-letter word. Now, let me just help you. We always encourage people with their, you know, to especially their elementary age kids, kind of take them to, to uh, church into the children's church because we say some things that are kind of crazy. So I'm going to tell you a four letter word that is messing up so many people. It, it's messing up their lives. It's something that adults do that um, has really a dirty word. You don't mention it in public, but adults do it and they do it often and they never tell their kids about it. It's terrible. Um, but it's a four letter word we need to talk about in church today. So I want you to get it. I got your attention. Like, 
<laughs> Everybody's in there like, why didn't I bring it? If you got your kids, just kind of cover their ears for a second. Because the word I want you to know that I think has made you uh, a slave is simply this word called debt. All right, so everybody's going, <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to say anything crazy. All right, so it's debt. And debt actually is that thing that makes you a slave to money. Because when you go into debt, you no longer are working for the future, working for your desires. You're actually working to pay off a, a desire you had in the past that no longer satisfies you, but now you're obligated to it. So you're, you're actually working backwards and you're slave to something that you we're never called to be slave to. I'm telling you, our culture and our community, and I'm talking South Tampa, I'm talking St. Pete, I'm talking about downtown, we are addicted to this thing called debt, and I'm telling you, it's not God's best for your life. It's not, our Financial Peace University people are cheering me down right now, but I just want you to know, it's not God's best. Let me show you what the Bible says about debt right here. It says that, listen, the rich rule over the poor, but the borrower is servant to the lender. In other words, you become a slave to something when you owe it money. And here, here's why debt is a problem, because our desire is to buy things because we think it'll satisfy us. So here's what we did. We buy a car that we can't afford, or we buy clothes that we shouldn't be buying, we put it on a card, and we go, it's okay, because we buy a couch, and we go, it's okay, because I'll pay it off then. And when you do that, here's what you do. You get this thing in your life that you thought would satisfy you, that you realize that we all have the same realization eventually that that thing that we thought would satisfy doesn't satisfy. But instead of paying for it in advance, we're now paying for it long after that, and now you get bitter and you get frustrated because every single month you're putting money towards something that now you realize that thing can never satisfy your life. That, that, that's why so many people don't understand how difficult this thing is called debt, and they jump right into it, and they, I'm telling you, I think it's one of the great baits of the enemy to get you trapped in life. Like, like, like give me that fishing pole. Um, we're gonna have fun with this one, okay? So if, this, if you wanna go fishing, you don't just throw a hook in the water and like just go, okay, come on, fish, go get it, and you know, hopefully the hook gets the fish. No, 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 what are you gonna do? You're gonna put bait on it, and what is the bait gonna do? It's gonna, it's gonna lure them in to trap them. So let me show you what it looks like a little bit in, in your life to just make it very simple. This is what, what it looks like when a lot of you guys, this is what your, your, your bait looks like. <laughs> the devil's going, oh, I got them right here. They could make it for 20 cents at home. <laughs> but no, let's get them to pay $4 for it today. I think that's a good one right there. They're, they're gonna get you a trap. And you go, well, it's not a big deal. It's just $4. But then it happens again and again and again. Let me help you out with another one. This is another good one. A lot of you guys, you could make the food at home. You could eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It costs you pennies. But instead, you gotta go, you gotta go to your, get your chicken. Come on, you gotta get that KFC buffet. Come on, I love that buffet, man. You just get in there and you overeat and you have a good time. And, and what are you doing? You're going out to eat. I'm telling you, I look back over my college years in the hundreds and then thousands of dollars that could have been saved up and used for other things. And what is it? Man, it just goes, goes down the drain. You're, you're eating your, your life away right there with things. How about this one? You go, I've just gotta have a new outfit. It looks so great, but, but Sarah bought a new outfit, so I've got to get a new outfit. And what do you do? They can put it on their credit card. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And I don't have to pay it for 18 months. But 18 months is going to come one day. And it's one of those things that the devil gets you on this. Uh, let's do another one here. Oh, there we go. I haven't fished in a while, so there we go. Uh, let's do one more. This is probably the biggest one because your neighbor just bought one of these. And you go, well, you know what? Mine works, but my neighbor has this one. And it's so much cooler, it's so much, and they can get me in for no money down. They can do it. And, and, and you don't realize that, that, that you're biting onto something. Listen, you're part of the 1% of the world that owns a vehicle right now. Let's be satisfied with what you got. Don't go into debt over it. Save up now. Try and find all the ways around it. Probably the best financial advice someone ever got me early, early on in life was this statement. Listen, no matter what it costs, other than your home itself, this is the advice they said. They said, never buy now and pay later, ever. Like, don't buy the, don't buy the couch until you can afford it. Don't buy the TV until you can have the cash on hand. Like, if you're gonna swipe it on a credit card, it's because the money, the cash is already in the account. There's just this advice that'll just help you out and you go, well, listen, uh, you know, uh, I'll do it my way. Your way's not working out for you. 
So let me tell you God's way is, listen, delayed gratification, wait for it, save up, work hard. The Bible says the, the, and the house of the wise is choice food and oil. In other words, they have saved up those things because they are wise. There's wisdom in not spending every time you get that money in your account. I'm telling you, God will bless you for it. Let me tell you, SNL gave some of the best financial advice ever. Years ago, I showed this clip and I'll give it to you again. It'll, it'll help you out. Check this out. Now that's funny, I don't care what you say right there. All right, now I know what you're thinking, you're going, Aaron, we came here for spiritual wisdom. When are you gonna, you're showing us SNL clips and talking to us about debt, all right, here's your spiritual wisdom. Ready, write it down. Simply pray before you pay. If you, if you wanna make it spiritual, listen, then put God in the equation before you spend. I really believe that every spending decision is a spiritual decision. If you just simply pray and say, okay, am I supposed to do this? So. Put in this early on in, in high school and college, I got some wise counsel of spending. So here's some good guidelines for you. I know it's different for your life, for your finances, but simply if it's under a dollar, wait a day. Uh, wait a, uh, under $100, wait a day. So listen, that outfit or that, 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 uh, those shoes, uh, just, just pause on it for a little bit. Pray and go, okay, is this something I'm supposed to go, to go into debt for? Am I supposed to make this thing a master in my life? If it's between $100 and $1,000, wait a week. It's good wisdom for you. Just wait a week and say, okay, I'm gonna try it next week and see about it. And, and if it's over $1,000, you're gonna buy a house or you're gonna buy a vehicle. Do this, just wait a month on it. Take 30 days, pray, go and fast. I'm telling you, it'll help your life. So here's what I want you to do. Here's the, the practical application of today's, of this part of the message. Ready? It's simply this. It could be the one thing. Maybe you've never applied something I've told you to do. Please do this. And it's simply this. You need to get a plan to get out of debt. You gotta get out of debt. And you gotta figure out a solution to get debt out of your life and be aggressive at it. It might mean you cut out Starbucks or you cut out going out to eat or you drive Uber at night. Do whatever it takes. Get out of debt. You need to release that, that master off of your life. I actually was meeting with some church planners um, a few weeks ago and they, they had this whole like dream in their heart to plant a church and, and the, the city that they did, I was so excited for them and I was so pumped about it. And, and I was so pumped about what, what God was gonna do in their life. And they showed me their website. They were ready to go. And I said, okay, when are you launching this thing? They're like, in five years. I said, five years? Jesus is coming back before five years. <laughs> it's crazy. Why are you, there's people that are dying in that city right now that need this church. And they go, well, pastor, I would go, but, but, but I, 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 we've got all this debt and we've got all these issues, and I've had over six figures worth of debt with school loans and medical bills and, and, and car payments. And I said, oh my gosh. I said, I didn't realize you just had another master in your life that I didn't know about. In other words, you can't be obedient to God because you're already having that master that you have to obey right there called obligation to debt. Get out of debt, church. I'm telling you, it'll help you be free to do what God's called you to do. I'm proud to say our church has zero debt. Come on, give God some praise for that. We're able to go to the convention center, write a check for it, and do outreaches, and do things. And you know what? Because we don't have obligations to anybody else. We have one master, and his name is Jesus. So if you want to get out of debt, you don't know how, we're going to do a financial freedom seminar in, on April the 6th. You're going to hear about it the next few weeks. Come that Saturday morning. It's free. You're going to be sitting at a table with an expert that'll help you rock, write out a plan to see you walk in financial freedom, because that's what God wants your life. Can I get a good amen one more time? All right, here's the last one, and we're going to close. Is resist the temptation to love money. He says, listen, you, can't, you have to love one or love the other. And I think a lot of us, you, you have this just desire to love God, but your heart is in another place. And, and let me tell you, nobody actually looks at money and goes, I love you. Oh, look at that. Look at the president on there. I get so excited. Nobody really, you don't love money. You love what money can do. You love the lifestyle that money can provide. So, so we're, we're, we're infatuated by this. And the Bible actually says it like this, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And look what it says. Some people eager for money, they drive, which by the way, pause for just a second. You don't have to have money to love money. Because I know a lot of poor people that as soon as they get that paycheck, they cash it and run to the convenience store and buy up the lotto tickets. Why? Because there's this desire for a lifestyle. They say that 80% of all income tax refunds are already spent before the money ever hits the person's account because of, of advances that they get on their stuff. Just to, we have this infatuation with gotta have more, gotta buy more, gotta get bigger, gotta get better. And it's destroying people. Because look, at they had this eager for money. They have wandered from faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. It's just this love for this lifestyle and this world. And I want it to be broken today. 
Bible says it like this, one man pretends to be rich. I've got a nice car, I've got a big house. Little do you know, it's, you're wrapped in debt and you got struggle after struggle. But the truth of it is, is it said, the scripture say, but really they have nothing. Because all those things in the world, I'm telling you, and I'm not against nice stuff. I want a nice car, love my house. I'm telling you, I love nice things. I love to go on nice trips. I'm telling you, it's, it's, I like good stuff. And I think God gives it to us for our enjoyment. But there's a very big difference when you realize that your love for that stuff, it'll drive your life. So here's how I keep myself from loving the things of this world. And it's very practical. Number one was getting out of debt. Number two, here's your solution, ready? It's simply get on a budget. Because when you're on a budget, a budget removes the emotional side of spending. So as much as you love that thing, you don't do it because you don't have the money for it because the budget tells you no. I can tell you, you need somebody to tell you no. And the best person to tell me no is my budget. She says, no, Aaron, that, you can't afford that today. You can't buy that thing today, but I love it, I want it, it's gonna make me happy. No, nope. the budget says no. If you've never gone on the budget, we'll help you with it. We'll get you a plan, go through Financial Peace University, get involved, go to that April event. And I'm telling you, we're gonna help you get a budget. I actually challenge people to do a zero-based budget. In other words, that means this. You start with your total income, you take out all your expenses that are just the regulars every month, and then whatever's left over, you never leave that amount just left over because you'll spend it on crazy stuff. That's how you buy crazy things that you love in this world. You actually have to give every single dollar a name and put it in different places. That's why we give first to God and give first, then, then able to save and invest. I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta have a plan for your finances. 57% of Americans don't even have a budget. And we need to change that at Radiant Church if we're gonna see God bless our finances. Can I hear a good amen today, church? Uh, I'll, I'll close with this idea because I believe the root problem of all of this and all of our finances is simple that we're simply chasing money more than we're chasing God. And, and no wonder we're not getting blessed because we're in this pursuit after more from this world instead of after a pursuit after more from God. And it just doesn't work out that way. For uh, Christmas, we bought our kids Kindles. Um, they're like the little things, like an iPad, but cheaper because we're on a budget. Amen. Like, so, um, and we're not against it. I know some people are against it, but we, uh, we believe they're cheaper than babysitters, so it works yeah. for us. And so it's fun. But uh, we have limits and all that kind of stuff. They're able to watch it on there. So, so we bought them. Uh, our kids would play on it, and they, they do their little education stuff and whatever. But uh, maybe a month or so ago, I came home, and my uh, kids always run up to the door and greet me, and they're you know, all excited. And I remember coming home and uh, the kids ran up to me and my oldest, Lily, who just, she just loves her Kindle, she was there and she was playing on it and she looked up at me and didn't even like acknowledge that I was in the house. And I'm telling you, I was like, that's it. That thing is gonna get smashed today. So I was like, Lily, I'm home, like I'm here. And she's like, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Hi, and then went right back to play. And I was like, no, 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 not in my house, not today. I ran up to grab that thing. I said, I will take that and I'll take it and throw it away if I need to. Here's, here's what she did. Understand. I bought her that thing. And I, I'm telling you, I want her to be happy and I want her to enjoy it. But there is no way that I will let her play on that thing if it distracts her from her relationship yeah. with me. So I think a lot of you guys, you have been so infatuated by things of this world and buying the next and the brightest and the biggest and God's sitting there going, hey, I'm trying to get your attention and you're so distracted and you wonder why God's not blessing your life. He'll never give you more when that stuff's got your attention more than he's got your attention. Let's put our focus on him. Let's put our attention on him. We don't serve money. We serve God. We don't love money. We love God. Come on, give him your best praise today. Amen. All right, let me pray for you. Every eye closed, every head bowed. You're in here today. Maybe that temptation of money, temptation of the world has gripped your heart. Just ask the Lord. Christians, this is normal. Just ask the Lord. Say, God, help me get my focus back on you. Get my attention right back on you. I don't need the next and the brightest and the biggest. Lord, I just need you. Lord, and as we pursue you and as we put you first, we know everything else will be added unto us, will be given to us. Lord, I pray that we would be a church that would be financially responsible. Lord, that we would get out of debt and we would get on a budget so that we can truly be blessed, so that we can be a blessing to the world around us. With every eye closed and every head bowed, there's people here today, and there have been at every service, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You have been serving money, or serving the world, or serving yourself, 
And today's your decision to say, you know what? I'm gonna serve God. I'm gonna give my life to God. And I'm telling you that one decision, you haven't messed up too much, you haven't gone too far for you to make one decision of faith to turn your life to God and God's right there and He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to cleanse you. You can be born again today, right here in this moment. If that's you on the count of three, I'm gonna have you slip your hand up, wave it at me, put it right back down and say, Aaron, today's my day to make a decision to follow Jesus. I'm done serving the things of this world. I'm ready to serve God. Ready? One, two, three. Throw those hands up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, so many people. St. Pete, thank you. Downtown, just pray this prayer. Say, God, I give you my life. I give you my heart today. I want you to be my Lord and be my Savior. For the rest of my life, I'm gonna follow you. Come into my heart. Change my life. Now say this. Say, Jesus, for the rest of my life, I'm gonna live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, come on, can we celebrate with a dozen or so people that just made the best decision of their life? Huge deal. Here's what I want you to do. You just made that decision. I want you to take that connection card. I want you to check on there. I committed my life to Christ. And we're gonna send you some resources. We're gonna send you a book. We are so proud of you for making the best decision ever. Hey, you're more than welcome to stay in for the next service or stay after and get baptized in St. Pete or stay uh, tonight, come back tonight at South Tampa, get baptized. Go public with that decision you just made. Hey, we're gonna end this service by worshiping God with our generosity. Actually, when we give to God, it releases the control of this world over our life. It releases and says, God, this money's not my master. You are my master. Now, I don't love this money. I love you, God. And when we give to God, we're truly making sure that he is first place in our life. And I'm proud to say, Radiant Church, we are so uh, doing a great job behind the scenes of being faithful with what God brings into our church. We want to, exactly what I just preached to you guys today, we try to practice here as a church with cutting down spending and, and doing more so that we can make an impact in the world around us. So thank you for being faithful to God. Just today alone, there's gonna be three or four dozen people that go public with their faith, sharing stories of life change because of your generosity. So Lord, bless the givers of this church here in the service, those that give online, those that give through text. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. Lord, I, I've regretted a lot of times I've spent money on food and on trips and on material things I've never regretted given to you, God. You are faithful to us. And I pray a blessing over your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that agrees says, amen, amen.